So you've seen this formula for pressure before. Pressure is equal to force over area. This equation explains why if people are wearing stilettos they tend to mark the floor. The area is very small so the pressure is very large and so they're more likely to leave an indent. Also if we leave a coke can in a hot car then the pressure inside increases which means the force on the walls of the coke can is large and so this can cause the walls to buckle as shown in this picture. So let's have a look at an example where we may use this formula. What pressure would you experience two meters under the water? Here's our water surface and here's our swimmer two meters under the water. So the swimmer has a volume of water on top of him. This volume is equal to the surface area a times the height which is 2 meters and we know that the pressure on the swimmer is equal to the force over the area. Now as well as the weight force from this mass of water pushing down on the swimmer we also have the atmospheric pressure which is acting on the surface of the water here so that continues to act on the swimmer that doesn't suddenly stop acting as soon as you go underwater so plus the atmospheric pressure. So the force acting is equal to the weight force, which is equal to the density of the water times the volume of water times g. So this is equal to the density of water times the height, which is the 2 meters, times the surface area times g. So let's substitute that in. The pressure is equal to rho h a g on a plus the atmospheric pressure. So these A's will cancel out and so now we can substitute in. The density of water is 1000 kilograms per meter cubed. The height, that's the 2 meters of water acting on him and G is 9.8. One atmosphere of pressure is 1.01 times 10 to the 5 pascals. So solving this on the calculator we end up with 1.21 times 10 to the 5 pascals. Or if we want to give that in atmospheres, it's equal to 1.2 atmospheres. So it's important to always remember to add in the atmospheric pressure that is acting on something. We can consider gas molecules microscopically. And from this we can calculate the pressure and the force exerted on a wall. Imagine a gas particle colliding with the wall. We're going to make the assumption that the kinetic energy is conserved, so the initial and the final velocities have the same magnitude. Now in the vertical direction, the y direction, the velocity is not changing, so the initial y component is the same as the final y component. You'll remember that the impulse equation, force times time, is equal to the change in momentum. So we can write force is equal to the change in momentum over time. The change in momentum, the mass isn't changing, so it's just a change in velocity. Now, in this equation, we can leave off the vertical components, as in the vertical direction, the velocity is not changing. In the horizontal direction, the velocity is changing. The initial velocity is in the opposite direction to the final velocity. They have the same magnitude, but the opposite direction. So Vfx is equal to minus Vix. So if we replace this Vix with a minus Vfx, we'll end up with 2m Vfx on t. So this is the force that one particle exerts on the wall. So we've now got some idea about what's happening microscopically. We'll be coming back to look at this equation again shortly. But for now, what we're going to do is look at pressure macroscopically. So we're going to have a look at how pressure, volume and temperature are related. It's a good idea to have a practice using this equation. To practice, try homework set 4, question 4 for Phys 1121 students or 5 for Phys 1131 students.